नबी का जिक्र जबाबे सजाए बैठे हैं विला का जाम लबों से लगाए बैठे अली का जिक्र जबा पे सजाए बैठे हैं विला का जाम लबों से लगाए बैठे हैं अली को ढूंढता है तू कहा जमाने में अली तो अश पे दफ्तर लगाए अली तो अश पे दफ्तर लगाए बैठे हैं नहीं यकीन तो मेराज में बता हासिल नबी अली को कहां पर बिठाए बैठे हैदरी अली के जिक्र से मोमिन का दिल मसरूर करता है अली के जिक्र से मोमिन का दिल मसरूर करता है बना के इसमें आजम दुख हमारे दूर करता है खुदा का बे में पैदा करके दुनिया भर के लोगों में करूं मैं क्या अली को आप ही मशहूर कर खुदा का बे में पैदा करके दुनिया भर के लोगों में करूं मैं क्या अली को आप ही मशहूर करता है भला कैसे लगाए ना अली के नारे पे नारे हमारा दिल मचलता है लघु मजबूर नारे है जरी लगाए भला कैसे लगाए ना अली के नारे पे नारे हमारा दिल मचलता है लघु मजबूर करता है अली के नाम पे कैसे ना इतराए ये फर्जा ने अली को देख के नुसरत खुद खुदा मंसूर करता अली को देख के नुसरत खुद खुदा मंसूर करता है जहाँ जब मुस्तफा नादे अली का विरद करते थे जहाँ जब मुस्तफा नादे अली का विरद करते थे खुदा मौला अली का खुद वहाँ जहूर करता है ये मुमकिन है सभी के नाम से नाकाम लौटा दे अली के नाम पे इमदाद वो जरूर करता है हैदरी चराग जलता है जिसका हवा के होते चराग जलता है जिसका हवा के होते हुए बना है मौला वही मुस्तफा के होते बना है मौला वही मुस्तफा के होते हुए रजाए रब का वो मालिक नहीं तो फिर क्या है जो जो फिताबों में उतरा खुदा के होते हुए मैं उसको मजहरे परवर दिगार क्यों ना कहूं दिखाए मोजे जो अंबिया के होते हुए जिन्हें खुदा ने बनाया खुद अली मौला उसे पुकारो हमेशा खुदा के होते हुए हर एक दौर में लोगों से किबरिया ने कहा अली अली करो तुम किबरिया के होते हुए मदद इमामे अली की क्योंकि बच्चे बैठे थोड़ा सा एक्सप्लेन कर दो ये बेटो जो मैं नज्म लिख रहा हूँ इसमें मैंने ये एक्सप्लेन किया है कि गॉड मेड ओवर ब्यूटीफुल इमाम अली अली मकाम दैट इवन द हाउस ऑफ अल्लाह इज कॉल्ड काबा बट इन काबा इट इज द ओनली वन पर्सन हु बॉर्न एंड दैट वाज इमाम अली वाइल द काबा इज ऑन द नेम ऑफ द गॉड एंड इवन द गॉड हिमसेल्फ इज सेट दैट यस आई एम द गॉड But whenever you need help, call Ali. So while the God is here, He is Almighty, but He love and He smile when we call Ya Ali, Mother. Nale Hajri. Nale. So इसलिए जामे विला चढ़ा के कहो Ya Ali, Mother. जामे विला चढ़ा के कहो Ya Ali, Mother. दिल में अली बसा के कहो या अली मदद सीने में जितना जोर है सारा लगा के आज हाथों को सब उठा के कहो या अली मदद माना नहीं पुकारते हो सब के सामने बस में अली में आके कहो या अली मदद आंखों में आके मुश्किलों की डाल के सुनो मुश्किल को चुप करा के कहो या अली मदद नादे अली के विद से दुश्मन पिछाड़ के मस्ती में सर हिला के कहो या अली मदद अफरीद कैसा कोई मुकाबल में क्यों ना हो हर खौफ को मिटा के कहो या अली मदद उस इस पुर खतर जमाने में रिजो नफाक से दामन को तुम बचा के कहो ठोकर लगे तो चोर से बचने के वास्ते ठोकर लगे तो चोर से बचने के वास्ते फौरन ही गिर गिरा के कहो कर मुक्ति ला हो कोई मुसीबत के दौर में कर मुक्ति ला हो कोई मुसीबत के दौर में घर घुस के आप जाके कहो नादे अली को पढ़ के खुदा को पुकार के बीमार को पिला के कहो मुमकिन
کتنے ہی گہرے زخم ہو صحت کے واسطے کتنے ہی گہرے زخم ہو صحت کے واسطے وہ خاکے شفا لگا کے کہو بے خوف ہو کے جابر و ظالم کے سامنے بے خوف ہو کے جابر و ظالم کے سامنے نقشے کہن بھی جا کے کہو دیکھو کوئی لگائے جہاں نعرہ ہے گری دیکھو کوئی لگائے جہاں نعرہ ہے گری مولا کو دل ملا کے کہو حج کے دوران موقع ملے تو دیوار کو جو حج پہ کہیں حج کے دوران موقع ملے تو دیوار کو کعبے کی مو لگا کے کہو جانے نہ دے تو دور سے بقیے کو دیکھ کر جانے نہ دے تو دور سے بقیے کو دیکھ کر اور قسم وفا کی کھا کے کہو زیر لہد یہ فرض ہے زیر لہد یہ فرض ہے دفنات وقت بھی why we are the only muslims then when we are dead and we go into the graveyard it is it is a duty of those people who are putting us into the grave that they should just shake over shoulders and they will say that remember who is your Aka? remember who are you? remember your Kalama? so then زیرِ لہب یہ فرض ہے تفناتِ وقت بھی شانہ کو تم ہلا کے کہو گبرا کے جب پکارے علی شان یا خدا which I told you before that whenever you are in the trouble and you said یا اللہ then what happened گبرا کے جب پکارے علی شان یا خدا حاطف نبی صدا کے کہو یا علی مدد شان کی سیفتی اسلام کے لئے باواز ہے بلند سلوات ایک دو چھوٹی روائی میرے باس بھی ہے بلند تر سلوات علی کا نام علی کا نام لینے سے دل کو سکون ملتا ہے ان کے در پر حق دا قانون ملتا ہے او میں بار بار اس علی کا ذکر کیوں نہ کروں جس علی محمد کے خون سے ملتا ہے آنکھوں میں جاگتا ہے صدای دم حسین کا سینے میں صاف لیتا ہے ماتم حسین کا مٹی میں مل گئے ہیں ارادے یزید کے آج بھی روشن ہے پرچم حسین کا نارے from London, but before I invite him, I'd like to give some background information on him. His full name is Sayyid Muhammad Rizvi, originally from Pakistan, Lahore, but born and raised in Austria, Benin. He has a degree in biomedical science. He has done two years in Hoza El Miyakum and then transferred to England to continue his studies and is currently studying in Hoza El Miyak, England. His teachers include the President of Majlis e Ulama, Malana Sayyid Ali Reza Rizvi, the representative of Ayatollah Khamenei, Sheikh Shamali, and Sheikh Yaqub. He is also a hijama practitioner. Blantar Sarwat. The lecture which will be delivered by Sayyid is on the title, is on Ali ibn Abu Talib, the definition of complete faith. Bawaz e Balan Sarwat. ولا يناله غوص الفطر لا 
الذي ليس لصفته حد محدود ولا نعد موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا أجل ممدود فطر القلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته وودد بالسقور ميادان أرضه ما شاء الله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وخاتم النبيين وأفضل الخلق أجمعين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع الذنوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم والمنكر فضائلهم أجمعين من الأولين والآخرين قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في قرآن المجيد وفرقان الحميد وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين آمنوا ولم يلبسوا إيمانهم بظلم أولئك لهم الأم وهم مهتدون صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات محمد وعلى Respected Hujjatul Islam al Muslimin Sayyid Maulana Niyaz Hussain Nakwisa, respected elders, brothers, sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I thank you for the opportunity uh, to come here. It is an honor for me to be here today for the Mu'mineen of Newport Wales. It is my first time here, Alhamdulillah. It is so beautiful to see so many welcoming and so many loving faces and the love that the brothers have already shown me is beyond that which I had expected and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and bless the community here with more and more barakat bi haqqi Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi Without further delay inshallah I will begin as time is short the topic that I've chosen for tonight, as tonight, remember Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen. Hence the topic I have chosen today is Ali ibn Abi Talib, the definition of complete faith, complete Iman. That Ali ibn Abi Talib was that perfect being who was the most perfect definition of complete faith. Kulli Iman was Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. The ayah of Quran that I recited in front of you says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those who have iman, those who have faith in their hearts وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ They do not mix their iman with zulm, with oppression, with any zulm can be of two types. One is that you do zulm or oppression upon someone else. You take the haq of someone else, you take the right of someone else. The other zulm or the other oppression is guna, sin. That is zulm upon yourself. Allah says in the Quran, those who have iman and do not mix their iman with sin or any type of oppression and zulm, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises them security, amn. Promises them amn from what? From azab. And He says they are muhtadu. They are the ones, the right, the ones on the right path. This shows the importance. Allah says again and again in the Quran, amanu, those who have iman, who It is Allah who sends sakina tranquility in the hearts of the believers. Allah speaks so much in the Quran about iman, and there's a reason for that. That the whole maqsad, the whole aim of religion is iman. Imam Amir al muminin says din al iman. That the whole maqsad of religion, the final destination of religion, is that we have iman. We build iman inside our hearts. In another, in another narration, the hadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The Holy Prophet says to his companion Abu Dhar, he says, Ya Abu Dhar, nothing is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than to have Iman in Allah. Allah loves that you have Iman in Him. And then the Holy Prophet says, but with Iman, the first step is 
to stay away from Muharramat. Muharramat are things that Allah has made haram. Gunah, sin. The Holy Prophet says, Abu Dhar, Allah loves those who have Iman in Him and Allah loves those who stay away from Muharramat, who stay away from sin, who stay away from Gunah, who, who complete their Wajibat. Now, we find that Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib was such a man that he says that the Iman of Ali ibn Abi Talib had reached such a stage that he himself says in Nahjul Balagha that if all of the hijabs, if all of the veils were lifted from the eyes of Ali ibn Abi Talib, you will find no increase in his Iman and you will find no decrease in the Iman of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Why? Because Ali ibn Ali, the Iman of Ali ibn Ali Talib had reached his maximum potential. He had reached the heights, the peaks of Iman that he says in Nahjul Balagha that you will find no change in the qalb, in the heart, in the sakina of Ali ibn Ali Talib. For he had maximized this level of Iman. The level of Ali had reached such a stage that he could not go beyond that level. And brothers and sisters, it is for this reason that many of times in Tariq of Islam, in history, you find that Ali ibn Abi Talib would be the one who would lay his life on the line for Rasulullah. Ali ibn Abi Talib was unlike ordinary men. Ali ibn Abi Talib was a man that his likes are unparalleled, unmatched to date. He was a man of great fada'il. A man of great virtues. The Quran is complete, a book complete based on the fada'il of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Many of the ulama have written, the Shia ulama have written that there are more than 1,000 ayat in Quran in the fada'il of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Sunni ulama have written up to 500 ayat in the fada'il of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And hence we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praising Ali ibn Abi Talib in the Quran is making him a role model for us. And so, the more you begin to study the biography of Ali, the tarikh of Ali, the seerah of Ali ibn Abi Talib, the more the mind becomes confused. The more the mind becomes baffled that truly Ali was perfect from each dimension and aspect that no matter how much you study him, the human mind is incapable of completely studying and understanding the shakhsi and the personality of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. And it is for this reason that Rasulullah says to his companion Salman, Salman al farisi al muhammadi the Holy Prophet says, Ya Salman, no one understands Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like me, Rasulullah, and my brother Ali ibn Abi Talib. And then he says, no one understands me and my nabuwa in the right sense except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ali ibn Abi Talib. But no one understands Ali ibn Abi Talib except me and Allah Jalla Jalla. And we find that Iman is of such importance that only if religion is, if you imagine a tree, the example of a tree, religion is that tree. Iman are the deep roots of the tree. The deeper the roots, the deeper the Iman, the deeper the Iman, the stronger the tree, the stronger the religion. Otherwise, otherwise it's just lip service we're paying to the religion. It's just lip service and nothing more. The deeper the roots are, the stronger the tree, and the more the fruit the tree will give. Hence, Iman is like that. That the roots have to become firm. And Iman can only be learned from Kulli Iman Ali ibn Abi Talib. Iman can only be learned from Ahlul Bayt. For Ahlul Bayt were those whose Iman were, had reached the highest peak. And only when we reach such a high level of Iman, can we then step into the battlefield for the sake of Islam, for the sake of the Prophet, to defend this religion, to defend the Holy Prophet of Islam. And so you find that 
in the battle of Uhud, it was Ali ibn Abi Talib who stayed with the Prophet when many of the Muslims, the Sahaba had fled backwards. Ali ibn Abi Talib stood shoulder to shoulder with the Holy Prophet of Islam. The Holy Prophet was in the mouth of danger. The enemy was charging at him. Ali ibn Abi Talib stayed back and he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him firm feet while the feet of others were slipping backwards. Allah, Allah. It was Ali ibn Abi Talib who defended and hence Abdullah ibn Abbas says, and this is in Kitab al-Rishad of Shaykh al-Mufid, the hadith is available in Kitab al-Rishad, Abdullah ibn Abbas said that Ali ibn Abi Talib has four fada'il that no one has. Number one was that Ali ibn Abi Talib was always the first to say the baker ya Rasulullah. Whenever the Holy Prophet would call the Muslims, whether it be in the in the the first da'wah of Islam when Banu Hashim were collected and Rasulullah announced Islam and his Nabuwa, Ali ibn Abi Talib was a young boy who stood up and said, Labbaik Ya Rasulullah. Second fadila of Ali ibn Abi Talib was that Ali ibn Abi Talib was the one who stayed with the Holy Prophet in Uhud when the others had left saving their lives. That was the fadila of Ali ibn Abi Third fadil of Ali ibn Abi Talib, he was the alamdar of Rasulullah in every march. In every army, the successful alamdar was Ali, the flag bearer was Ali ibn Abi Talib. And the fourth fadil of merit of Ali ibn Abi Talib that no one has is Ali ibn Abi Talib took the janazah of Rasulullah in the qabr al mutahhar of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. we find that it was Iman of Ali ibn Abi Talib. When those who had left the Holy Prophet in the mouth of danger in Uhud, Ali stayed back. It shows the high level of Iman. It shows that Ali ibn Abi Talib had that firm-feetedness that others didn't have. And hence, same thing happened in the battle of Khandaq. If you come towards Khandaq, when the Kuffar of Quraysh had decided to attack Medina, to kill the Holy Prophet and finish Islam. It was the bravery of Ali that saved them from this fitna of Quraysh. Abu Sufyan had brought an army towards Medina. The Holy Prophet dug a trench. A khandaq was dug around Medina to keep the enemy out onto the other side. And the Muslims were safe. Tents were erected and Muslims were safe. Abu Sufyan's army reaches the khandaq. They see it is impossible to cross this Khandaq. And the uh, Muarakheen have written that for 20 days Abu Sufyan waited there. And for 20 days the Muslims remained on the other side. And they had a champion with them by the name of Amr ibn Wad. Amr ibn Wad was a champion feared by the Muslims. A man who could take up to 20, 30 men on his own. And this man was clever. Do you know what he did? He said, I would go around the city, find the narrowest part of the trench, where the trench is really narrow, and try to cross it. And so he took a few from amongst the kuffar of Quraysh. He went around the city, and he managed to find a narrow part. And so what he did, he went back with all his power and might. He charged with his horse towards the trench, and he manages to cross into Medina and he comes face to face with the Muslims and as he approaches the Muslims he challenges the Prophet to a fight he taunts and disrespects the Holy Prophet Amr ibn Wadda'atullah he says Ya Muhammad you promise your Sahaba of Paradise you promise them of Jannah that Shaheeds go to Jannah send them to me let me send them to Jannah he asks the Holy Prophet in a rude manner. Rasulullah says to his companions, to his Sahaba, to the Muslims, Man lahu, who will go and fight him? Ashab, my companions. Everyone is silent, motionless. No one is speaking. Everyone feared this warrior, except one young man by the name of Ali ibn Abi Talib who stands up and says, Ana ya Rasulullah. I will go, Ya Rasulullah. The Holy Prophet says, Sit, Ya Ali. And he asks again, Is there anyone among you to go and silence this fitna? 
Again, Ali ibn Abi Talib is the only one to rise saying, Labbaik, Labbaik, Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah says, Sit, Ya Ali. For the last and final time, Rasulullah asks his companions, Is anyone out there to go and end this fitna? Ali ibn Abi Talib again rises and Rasulullah says, Come close, Ya Ali. Ali ibn Abi Talib comes close to the Prophet. Allah. Rasulullah takes off his ammama and he puts the ammama on the Allah. holy head of Rasulullah. He covers the chest of Ali ibn Abi Talib with the armor and then he makes his dua. He faces the companions and he says, this is my brother, my wasi, my khalifa. Ali ibn Abi Talib, he raises his hands towards the skies. He raises his hands towards the sky and he makes this dua. Ya Mawl Rabbi, Ya Mawlai. Oh my Allah, this is my brother Ali. Protect my brother Ali. Protect his life. For, and then he faces the companions. He says, This is Kulli Iman going head to head with Kulli Kuf. This is complete faith going to war, going to jihad with complete Kuf. Subhanallah. And it was through the sword of Ali ibn Abi Talib that the fitna of Abu Sufyan was sent to hell forever. Brothers and sisters, we are in the best of months, the month of Ramadan, and tonight is the best of night, Laylatul Qadr. Use Ali ibn Abi Talib as a wasila. Ali ibn Abi Talib, when we say he was complete faith, he was complete Iman, we will never be able to become complete like Ali. No, we will never be able to reach that maqam of Ali. But just little bit, just that little bit that we can take from his personality, from his shakhsiyah, from his life, even if we take a little bit for us, that will change our lives forever. Use this month, connect with Quran, connect with ibadah, connect with munajat of Imam Ali alayhi salam, <coughs> where the du'as of Amir al-Mu'min, whether it be munajat Amir al-Mu'mineen, Connect with Ali ibn Abi Talib through the Munajat. Recite Quran as much as you can. Use these final moments that are amongst us to really connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For each ayah that you recite, Allah will reward it ten times as compared to other months. If you can, stay in wudu as much as you can. Extra thawab has been given in this month of Shah Ramadan that is not given in the other months. And this month is the month of Ali ibn Abi Talib. For Ali ibn Abi Talib was martyred in this month. This is the month of Quran, for Quran was revealed in this month. This is the month of Laylatul Qadr. This is the month where the Mu'mineen will decide their final destiny for the next year to come. This is the month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will promise the fulfillment of the ajat of mu'mineen. So use Ali ibn Abi Talib as a wasila to make the most of these nights. Stay in wudu because wudu is a form of worship. It is said that anyone who stays in wudu or who sleeps in wudu, the whole night is counted as ibadah. Many of the ulama and maraja, when they are asked, if you had one dua, that Allah accepts that dua, what would that dua be? The, these are ulama, these are maraja. But you know what they say? If we had one dua it, which was guaranteed to be accepted, they say that we hope and we pray that when we die, when we meet Malak al Maut, we die upon Iman. We die upon faith. Because that's the most difficult part. That we die upon faith. It is no merit being a mu'min here. If I am a mu'min, this is no good for me right now. What is good for me that I die a mu'min? When Malik al Maut is extracting my soul, this is the challenge that I stay a mu'min then. And this is the toughest of challenges. But those who are the lovers of Ali ibn Abi Talib, Imam has a hadith narrated by his companion, Haris Hamadani, who says that anyone who dies shall meet Ali ibn Abi Talib. Anyone who is the dying person will see Ali ibn Abi Talib. And we pray Ali ibn Abi Talib will rescue us from the Sakarat al-Maut. 
will rescue us from the difficulty of death. And finally, before I move on to the Masa'if, one last point to remember this great Shaksi, because tonight is Ali's night. Tonight is the night we remember this great personality who was taken away from us. Iman of Ali had reached such a stage that it had taught him Ithar. Another comp quality of Ali was Ithar. Ithar is that you desire for others before you desire for yourselves. Holy Prophet says, says that you have not truly believed unless you wish for your mu'min brother that which you wish for yourself. This is what the Holy Prophet says. That you have not truly believed until you desire for others what you desire for yourself. And so, when Abu Jahl and Quraysh had decided to kill the Holy Prophet and to put an end to Islam, and Jibra'il descended and he, he promised the Holy Prophet victory. He said, make Hijrah migrate from Mecca to Medina because Quraysh will kill you tonight. Quraysh will assassinate you in the darkness of the night. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi calls Ali ibn Abi Talib and he says, Ya Ali, Allah has, made me, Allah has commanded me to do Hijrah, to migrate from Mecca to Medina, Ya Ali. Will you sleep in my bed tonight? Imam, look at what Ali says. Ali doesn't say, is my life in danger? Will I be killed? Ali says, Sayyidi ya Mawlai ya Habibi ya Rasulullah. If I sleep in your bed tonight, is your life safe? Will your life be safe? Rasulullah says, yes ya Ali, if you sleep in my bed, I will be saved. Imam Ali smiles, becomes happy, and he falls in sujood. He falls in sajda and he does shukr of Allah that Allah chose Ali to save the life of Rasulullah. <laughs> Allah chose Ali ibn Abi Talib to save the life of Rasulullah. And so Ali ibn Abi Talib sleeps on the bed of the Holy Prophet. And it is said that on that night, Allah calls his archangel Jibra'il and he calls Mika'il on that night and he says, I have bonded you with brotherhood. You are Jibra'il, the brother of Mika'il. In the same way I have bonded Muhammad Rasulullah with Ali ibn Abi Talib. But he says, O oh, Jibra'il, O oh, Mika'il, do you prefer the life? Do you give priority to the life of your brother upon your life? They say, Ya Rabbi, Ya Mawlai, we love our brother, but we prefer our own life. We prefer our own sake. And then Allah says, well in that case, look down, that's Ali ibn Abi Talib. Hada Ali ibn Abi Talib, he has considered the life of Rasulullah muqaddam upon his life. He has given the life of Rasulullah priority upon his life. And he says, descend down and save the life of Ali. Mikail descends towards the feet of Ali. Jibra'il descends towards the head of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And he says, as Ali ibn Abi Talib is asleep with the blanket of Rasulullah on top of his jisme mutah on his holy body. Jibra'il said to Ali, Bakhin, Bakhin laka ya Ali. Congratulations, congratulations, oh Ali. Allah is honored to have you. Allah has honored you above the malaika and the angels. And so they protected the life of Ali ibn Abi Talib in the morning, the Quran, before the morning as Quraysh were waiting outside in the darkness of the night with daggers and knives in their hands in the morning, they jump over the wall into the house of the Prophet as they remove the blanket from Ali ibn Abi Talib rises from there and the sight of the nur of Ali causes fear and terror in the heart of the enemy that some of them escape to the left and some of them escape to the right and so Ali's life is saved and Rasulullah's life is saved that night. It was with the Ithar of Ali ibn Abi Talib that Ali had reached such an ex such a extent of Iman that his life had no value for him over the life of Rasulullah. His life had no value for him except all he was, all that he cared for is that the mission of Rasulullah continues and it does not end. And so we find that Amir al Mu'mineen is in his last five few moments to remember the Masaib of Ali ibn Abi Talib, brothers and sisters. Today, 
cry for Ali ibn Abi Talib because Ali ibn Abi Talib today gave everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so Ali ibn Abi Talib in his final moments very soon he will reach the mihrab of Khun he will reach the mihrab of Kufa where he will pray his last salat he will pray his last namaz and give his last azan and it is narrated in the hadith that Amir al muminin was a guest in the house of Umm Kulthum, his daughter, and Umm Kulthum was preparing the iftar. Ali ibn Abi Talib was having iftar in his house, in the house of his daughter Umm Kulthum, and so it comes to a point that Ali ibn Abi Talib sits on the dastar khan, sits on the sufre of food. Iftar is prepared. Ali ibn Abi Talib does iftar with a little bit of salt and a little bit of bread. He does not eat more than three bites and he stops to eat. And then he becomes busy with the ibadah Ali ibn Abi Talib. Look at the ibadah of Ali ibn Abi Talib, brothers and sisters. It is narrated that Umm Kulsum was busy in her house and Ali ibn Abi Talib <coughs> took to the side of the house and began to do the dhikr of Allah. And as he was sitting, it is said that every, every once in a while he would step outside the house and he would look towards the sky as was the darkness of the night, Ali would look to the sky and he would say, yes, this is the promised night. This is the night that my Habibi Rasulullah had promised me that I shall meet my Habibi Rasulullah. And so Umm Kulsum begins to hear Ali's voice. She pays attention and she sees Ali is looking towards the darkness of the night and he says, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Ali ibn Abi Talib says, yes, this is the night, this is the promised night. Umm Kulsum begins to cry, her heart becomes heavy. She sends her brother Hassan, she says, Oh my brother Hassan, Ya Hassan, go to your father Ali ibn Abi Talib and ask him, why is he speaking like this? Uh, Imam Hassan goes to his father, he says, Ya Abba, Ya Ali, Oh my father, why do you speak like this? Uh, he says that I have seen a dream and very soon, my son, I shall meet my grandfather Rasulullah. My time is close, my son. And so it is says as time is getting close to Fajr, Ali ibn Abi Talib makes his way to the Masjid of Kufa. Ali ibn Abi Talib is going towards the Mihrab of blood where he shall be martyred, Ya Shia. Do not do bukhl in crime today. Do not hold yourself back for crime for this is the last night of Ali ibn Abi Talib and he will not survive any longer. As he reaches, as he reaches the mosque of Kufa, he sees Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim la'anatullah alayhi. He is sleeping on the side of the mosque. He goes to he goes to Abdul Rahman and he wakes him up. He goes as salat as salat. It is time for namaz. It is time for namaz. Ali takes to, takes to the front row and he begins to give the azan. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And then he begins the namaz. He brings his he starts to pray his salat. Allahu Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim He goes into Ruku He rises from Ruku And then he goes into the first Sajda And as Ali ibn Abi Talib is rising from the first Sajda Abdul Rahman Al-Laim jumps at the back of Ali with his poisonous dagger and he stabs Ali ibn Abi Talib And the screams of Ali Ali ibn Abi Talib 
has been killed, brothers and sisters. Last final sentences and inshallah you will give pursa to Imam. Imam is brought to his house. Imam makes his wasiyah to his son, to his children. He tells his family, gather upon me my beloved, for I want to make my last wasiyah. His family gathers upon him. He's, he sees Al-Hassan, he sees Al-Hussein. Hassan is crying, Imam Hussein is crying. He tells him, Ya Hassan, don't cry, my son Hassan. He says, and then he looks at Imam Hussein. He says, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, and the Shaheed had the hill of Malayo, Mikayo, Mikaya, Aba Abdullah. Oh, Hussein, you are the Shaheed of this Ummah. You are, there is no day like yours, Ya Hussein. And so, he manages to calm, he manages, he, he manages to calm Imam Hassan. He manages to calm Imam Hussein. But then when Zainab begins to cry, he starts to cry himself. When Umm Kulsum begins to cry, Ali ibn Abi Talib cannot hold his tears. Ali ibn Abi Talib begins to cry. He says to his daughter Zainab, Zainab don't cry. But I say to Ali, if you were in Karbala, you would have not stopped Zainab from crying. Because whenever Zainab would want to cry, she was whipped with lashes by the soldiers of Bani Uraya. Whenever Zainab would cry, she would have to stop herself from crying for the sake of Sugaina. Whenever Zainab would cry, she would have to give herself patience for the sake of